Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and welcome back to the continuation of our class guides list. And today, in Tales of Majael, we're going to be going over the Paradox Mage. Probably the single strongest class in the game, able to do pretty much everything. Um, all content, they can do the easiest, uh, I guess. They are a basically, they're a caster class that uses time magic, but their main, their main strength is they are very defensive. They can teleport around, they can uh, remove themselves from the battlefield for a little while to get a breather, they can, um, they can heal themselves, they can also, uh, they're really good at damage mitigation, and that's probably the reason why I like them the most is for the damage mitigation portion. And the, their trees for damage mitigation can also be used on adventure builds, too, because with Paradox, uh, the way their damage mitigation works, one of their spells, it reduces the damage and makes it go towards your Paradox. But Paradox, uh, it's a weird, it's a weird resource. Paradox, as you cast spells, you your Paradox increases, and then if it gets too high random effects can happen. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. It's like equilibrium, but when it fails, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like other things happen and there's way to, ways to control your paradox. For races, what well, you're probably going to want to go Drem or Shalor. The reason why is because especially with with Shalor, there are a lot of things that uh, they can make use of, especially with an attenuate build. They can lengthen the amount of time their buffs are on themselves which in some cases that will go over is really useful for an attenuate build um, if you're going a direct damage build it's less uh, ne necessary to be a Shalor but Drems they're also fun with attenuate builds because you can cast attenuate twice in a row but for fights that take a long time which the harder fights will because your damage is only decent remember uh, a Shalor is going to win out. And then also uh, an honorable mention is the Hire because one of their racials lets them use their abilities without costing resources. They can kind of get past the Paradox problem. But we're going to be taking hidden resources anyway. So a Hire is kind of... It's nice to have both hidden resources and the Hire's racial, but... Uh, hidden resources is usually more than enough, especially with the amount of ways that we have to rest, basically, or get out of combat. But yeah, let's go over stats. Uh, pretty obvious. You want to go magic, then willpower, and then cunning. Uh, early on, I do take with a lot of casters who are weak. I take constitution up to 20 once I reach the level 8 requirement for um, magic for their skills so it's uh, magic 20 or 22 sometimes I'll go but uh, then I take constitution to 20 and then also strength you're gonna want to have it at 16 to 18 now I normally go massive armor with paradox mages but because of the changes to robes and how they have a just a really good confluence of stats now that it's really hard to be a robe four stats if you can get defensive in other ways and the like i said before paradox mages can even before 1.6 when they changed the robes to be better a uh, paradox mage could get away with going light light armor um fairly easily even without the mobility tree but yeah uh, i think they should stick to robes um but you still need to go 16 18 in strength to wear some of the early armor if you don't find a good robe, and then also just so you can uh, unlock heavy armor training one, and then maybe even two if you want to go short staff and shield, which is it's it's usable because there's a decent um, there's a decent paradox mage shield called the temporal rift I think, and it it helps reduce your anomaly chance and stuff like that. So, but anyway, yeah, you do need to take strength up a little bit. So magic then to max willpower shortly after and then when you're done with willpower maxing it out you want to go into cunning now one thing about willpower you do want to have it at 50 before you reach level 25 so you can get hidden resources hidden resources requires willpower 50 and that's that's uh, hard to get to 
Um, well, it's not hard to get to Willpower 50, but if you forget about it and you're level 18, you're going to be hard-pressed to get to 50 in Willpower before you get to level 25, which is exactly what happened to me. I didn't end up getting it until, like, level 31, which is a pain because Hidden Resources is just such a nice buff for the Paradox Mage. But yeah, let's go through the skills. This time around, I'm going to try and just do an overview of the skill instead of reading it out. Repulsion Blast. And then just let me know in the comments if you prefer it this way or if you prefer me reading out this the scale the the skill uh, tooltips. It's a perfect class to do it on because as you can see, the Paradox Mage rivals the Arc Mage, not quite as much as the Arc Mage for skills, but close enough. All right, starting off with Repulsion Blast. This is going to be your area of effect damage. Um, it also knocks back, and if you knock an enemy back into something or a wall or an enemy, they take additional damage. Uh, it's nice as a knockback. You can leave it at one. Gravity Spike. This is going to create an AoE damage ability, but it moves all enemies towards the epicenter of where you cast it. Enemies at the edge will take less damage, but also... Um, it creates like a chain, so the more enemies that are moved, the more damage it will do. Uh, it's not a huge increase. Uh, right here, it's it's a maximum of 40 bonus damage at level 1, which is, it is half the damage, but I don't know. I just cast it on a group of enemies. It's I'm not trying to move a bunch of people at once just to get the bonus damage. Uh, Gravity Locus. This is going to convert... Well, let's see what it is at maximum. It's going to be about half, that's what I thought, of all damage you deal into physical, which is good if you're going to go uh, direct damage build. This is not for the attenuate build, though, so you're not actually going to want to keep this on. It also slows projectiles, and then um, it makes repulsion blast lower. It has a chance to lower knockback resistance, but... I mean, I guess if cooldown 4, that's a that's a decent debuff, especially if you want the cooldown to go off. But uh, mainly this is the... You want to max this out if you're going a direct damage build, which is the Matter Tree and uh, basically all your direct damage spells. But we are going Attenuate, so we're going to leave it at 1. Actually, we're probably not going to take it at all. And then Gravity Well. This... Um, it's a big AoE. It's what those worms use on you in Sandworm Lair that's really annoying. It slows by quite a bit, 33% uh, at 5 out of 5. Now, with an Attenuate build, you can take this up to 5 out of 5, or you can ignore these two completely, which, for now, that's what we're going to do. We might have points left over to put in there, but uh, these two you want early on because they help you get through the early game. All right, Chronomancy Matter, Dust to Dust. It's it's a, it's a direct damage beam spell, but it does half temporal damage and half physical damage. Now, if you were going a direct damage build, if you took this all the way up, it would be, I think, three-fourths physical damage. So it lets you stack physical damage more easily. If you are going a direct damage build, you want to stack physical damage, and that helps um, Dust to Dust and that it's going to take more advantage of your plus physical damage and physical penetration. But even on an attenuate build, you wanted at least one. You can also cast it on yourself to do an AoE attack. Matter weaving. This is pretty nice. It gives you, at max, it gives you 57% uh, resistance to stunning. It also gives resistance to cuts. And then it gives a decent amount of armor, 27, which is really nice. The only problem is it's a sustain. And with sustains, uh, you don't want to get your stunning resistance from sustains but this is just too much so if it ever gets removed and you're against the stunning enemy just clear the stun or something but uh, yeah this is way too much stunning resistance not to make use of it so 27 armor 57 stunning resistance really nice all right M materialized barrier this is really really nice this creates a a wall the duration never goes up and the length never goes up now it's, it's a length of three for four turns, but that's more than enough. It's going to cut off a corridor or whatever. So at one out of five, it's perfect. It actually, you don't even need to bring it up anymore because look at this. It says, if any part of this wall is dug out, it will explode, causing targets in a radius of one to bleed for 67 physical damage over six turns. First of all, that's a very small amount of damage, but at the same time, every time I've tried to dig it out, like with dust to dust, eventually you can dig with that. Um, 
it just it doesn't work so I don't know what the deal is if my game is bugged but even if it did work it would be very crappy damage so basically you want this at one out of five it's very 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 good at one out of five and the any more points is just pretty much worthless disintegration this is very nice while active your physical and temporal damage has a chance to remove beneficial physical or magical effects um, from everyone you hit so physical and temporal damage that's everything you do basically uh, you can only remove one per turn from each target but with attenuate it's AOE damage so you can remove uh, more than one a turn um, and you're gonna have attenuate on a bunch of targets so it's it's a very it's a decent beneficial effect removal it's not the most powerful but it's nice to have it the effect chance goes up to 42 percent chance um, each turn but uh, you'll find it working quite a bit physical and magical temporary effects those aren't sustains but like physical temporary effect would be recovery if an enemy has a high vitality skill they'll be recovering a lot of health this will get rid of that a magical temporary effect oh god I can't even think of one um, yeah I can't think of one but there it is nice you do want it and then additionally it lets you dig with your dust to dust spell so I usually take it two out of out of five because look at this at one out of five it goes from 17 percent to two out of five 32 percent to remove an effect it also goes from one you can dig one wall up to three walls with one dust to dust so after that the diminishing returns hits it hits it hard so it goes from 32 percent to 37 percent just not really useful but uh i think you're supposed to use dust to dust with disintegration to cut through the materialized barrier but i've done that and it doesn't seem to work so if anyone else has gotten that to work let me know uh warp mines these are fun in the beginning uh they you put a bunch of mines down and if an enemy steps on it it does uh some damage in the beginning chronomancers have a really difficult beginning or they used to have a really difficult beginning dungeon and warp mines were one of the only ways you could get through it as a temporal warden but uh it's i think it's not bad but depending on the type of mine it either warps them away from you or towards you so it's kind of random and you can't really count on it but i do love these in the beginning on a temporal warden you don't really need it on a on a paradox mage though spatial tether all right this one te it tethers the target to a location you've probably had this done to you a bunch of times but each turn uh, the target has a 15% chance per tile it's traveled away from the tether to be teleported back, inflicting damage uh, to all enemies in a radius one at both the entrance and exit locations. Basically, you tether an enemy to a spot, and the farther they get away, the more likely it is to teleport them back. Very good on enemies, not so great on you. Um, maybe if you tether an enemy far away from you, a melee one, it'll keep getting teleported back, but I rarely use it if it was instant I'd probably use it a lot more but it takes a turn and yeah and it's 15% chance per tile so what's the range on it only five yeah definitely not good you'd you'd have to kite them farther away from it and in that yeah no tether target for six turns so l realistically it's only gonna get up to a 45% chance before he it reaches you at a range five and maxing out unless you kite it it's going to be 75 percent but that's going to be almost the end of the duration anyway so it's just it does go up to eight turns but i just don't think that that's worth it banish this uh randomly teleports all enemies within a radius three um if they teleport far enough away they can be stunned blinded confused or pinned i i should use this but i don't um, I actually don't I float points in warp mines but then I take them out so I, ra I rarely ever use banish but it is decent enough so teleport enemies away and they will get uh, a random debuff for two turns two turns isn't good but I mean any debuff is good really dimensional anchor it creates a radius 3 anti teleport field 
for six turns and daze all enemies and in the in the area of effect for two turns enemies attempting to teleport while anchored take damage so th this has probably happened to you quite a bit and you just didn't notice but uh yeah it's super annoying when it happens to you not really i mean how how often are enemies really teleporting away from you occasionally necromancers and then in the four armory but after that what else it's just too situational to use all right going down to speed control celerity when you move you gain movement speed for one turn it stacks uh only three times even at one out of even at five out of five but um if you want to take this it is decent but go to four out of five because then the buff will last for two turns But yeah, it's it's a decent. I like Celerity. If I have extra points, I'd put it in there. But with the Paradox Mage, as you can tell, they've got a lot of fun stuff. So I don't usually have a lot of points left over. Uh, but I will take one point in it early on just for the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for the buffs or for the movement speed buff in the beginning in case you need to run away from something. Later on, you'll have lots of teleports and movement infusion. So it's less important. All right, uh, time dilation. Uh, it's every time you use a spell that's not instant you gain uh, speed attack spell and mind speed really really all that matters is spell speed and then um, it goes up to two turns at five out of five can stack three times so it's not bad let's see out of five out of five what would it be at max it would be 10 20 30 40 56 right or 50 oh god dang it no 54%, which is not bad. Uh, the problem there is with an attenuate build, you don't have a lot of damaging things you need to do. It's really just juggling two things, but uh, we'll go over that once we get to attenuate. It's still, it's fine. It's more geared towards an auto attacker like uh, the Temporal Warden. Haste, increase your global speed for 35% chance, 35% for six game turns. That's actually pretty good. Uh, again, it's better on an auto attacker where you know what you're going to be doing every turn and you can make use of global speed. With casters, it's a little bit more difficult. Time stop. You can gain three turns during this time. You don't do any damage, though. Still very useful. Uh, the only problem is it costs a lot of paradox. 48.8 paradox. But this is what mine looks like in the beginning. Just one into celerity. And that's the same for either build that you want to go. Either... Uh, direct damage or attenuate this tree is more useful if you're going into the gra or direct damage tree because you have more spells you need to cast all the time chronomancy time travel i will almost always get one point in temporal bolt um i will float more points into temporal bolt in the beginning sorry um you're always going to have at least one point in it but you can float points in this early on because it does it does decent damage and sometimes enemies will move with the bolt it travels towards you from where you cast it and each tile it moves it moves kind of slowly it gains damage i think it's what five percent yeah but uh it's it's kind of good in the beginning because it'll hit an enemy more than once because they'll move forward as you move forward and it's like a reverse beam too so it's just filler basically it's not something you're going to cast first, but it is something you're going to cast. Time skip. Just do temporal damage, and then if they survive, this is like the Rune of the Rift. Uh, they're removed from time for five turns. It's it's okay. Um, I rarely ever use it, though. Um, I leave it at one out of five, and then I'll use it like as a last resort, or if I'm in trouble and I need to get rid of something, and I'm waiting for cooldowns, I'll use it. But I, I rarely use it even though it is nice. Temporal Reprieve, very, very good skill. Transport yourself to a safe space, safe place for seven turns. Um, this will actually go up. It's not just seven turns. I think I've gotten it to 12 turns before, which is amazing, especially because of the way... Hold on, let's get it down to one. I'm actually going to leave points in Banish this time around. I think I should make more use of Banish. But anyway... 12 turns. Let's look at uh, space-time tuning. Used to set your preferred paradox. While resting or waiting, you'll adjust your paradox towards this number at a rate of 10 per turn. Your paradox modifier, modifier is factored into the duration and spell power of all chronomancy spells. Basically, the higher your paradox, the more likely an anomaly is to go off, but also the more likely um, or the higher spell power you have. So 
Anyway, with Temporal Reprieve, you can build up a ton of Paradox, but then you just sit there and hit space, and it will go down very, very quickly because of space-time tuning. And basically, Temporal Reprieve is almost at 5 out of 5, and extending its duration, plus with Timeless, it's pretty much enough to reset your Paradox every time you need to cast it. It's got a fixed cooldown of 40, but... So you're really only going to use it once per fight, except for two fights that I can specifically think of. The final boss is an Atomaton. Atomaton. Still good, though. Definitely 5 out of 5 it. And then we'll go over it more and see if we can extend it farther than that. Echoes from the Past. This is okay. It's really not that great. People do like it, though. Um, does an AoE damage around you. The, the enemies take damage, but it also... Let's see. Out of 5 out of 5, it'll do 43% of the difference between their current life and max life as additional temporal damage. Um, so the additional damage is divided by the target's rank and the damage scales with your spell power. So, I mean, it can hit for about a thousand in a radius, which is decent once you're fully geared up, but it's just, it's not that great. So uh, a lot of people like it though. Play with it and see what you like it. I do end up taking it higher, but it's just to speed up gameplay. It's not because it's specifically powerful or anything. All right, Chronomancy Flux. This is what you're going to put your first category point in, or if you're a Kornak at level 0, you're going to put a point into it. But at level 10, yeah, Flux. All right, Induce Anomaly. This basically creates an, alum, an anomaly to heal your Paradox. Uh, it doesn't trigger... It doesn't trigger a major anomaly, but... Uh, hold on just a second. And it, you can't hold this. However... You can target them now. So, you can't hold this. You cannot hold this anomaly like you can with another one. We haven't gone over that yet, so don't worry about it. But it lets you, or it's supposed to let you target it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I need Twist Fate first. All right, it's Reality Smearing. Uh, this is their best defensive tool. Um, you can take it to four out of five. That's where it gets its last biggest jump or go to 5 out of 5 for a 0 0.03 increase, but probably 4 out of 5 is fine. This takes 30% of all damage you're taking and it converts it to Paradox per point. So basically one, um, let's see, you can take 2 point, like 2 damage per Paradox point and it'll increase that. But Paradox will go up forever, you know. Or I think it goes up to a thousand before you die, or something like that. Or the major anomalies can kill you after 600. But uh, basically, this is a really good version of disruption shield. But it's using your paradox instead of mana. And then we get to attenuate. This is our best spell and our best friend. All right, this is going to do damage over four turns to all targets in a radius of two. You get your radius two at four out of five but i'm gonna take it up to five out of five anyway um if you have reality smearing on it's also going to heal you for 85 life over four turns now if you get the target below 20 percent, it's just going to instantly kill them so basically you can take uh you can take all enemies in the game and just ha take off 20 percent from the hit points uh i'm pretty sure it works on everything it might not work on uh boss mobs but i'm pretty sure it does uh, twist fate. All right. Now this is what we need for induce anomaly to work. Now we can target our anomalies. Anomaly slow. See, that's that's not a bad anomaly unless we hit ourselves with it. So as long as we are the one targeting our anomalies, it's anomalies are not actually a bad thing. They're not necessarily as good. Here's our temporal reprieve, by the way. Um, but look, stop. Um, there's another one we can get that's really good. You can get your temporal shield. You can get anomaly haste. Cast it on yourself. So we are, we are moving 37 per, wait, no, here it is, 17% faster. I wonder if that uh, anomaly coincides with your actual haste, like if it goes up, if you level up your haste, does it level up the anomaly haste? I don't know, I should test that out. But anyway, yeah, Twist, twist Fate, it lets you hold an anomaly. So when it happens um, as a random chance, not with um, Induce Anomaly, Entomb's really good basically stone wall 
But uh, basically, when you get an anomaly, see it's grayed out right here, Twist Fate. Something happens here. This turns into an activated, activated ability with the random effect of whatever that anomaly would have been. Twist Fate, um, as you level it up, it will hold the anomaly for more turns. Um, but the problem there is if you get one one anomaly you're probably going to get another one because your your percentage of your percent chance is pretty high so um taking it up really high for six turns oh we can hold an anomaly for six turns it's really not that great because you're going to get hit by another anomaly and then they'll just start going off randomly again and then um the paradox anytime an anomaly happens your paradox gets reduced but with this twist fate your paradox won't be reduced until you actually trigger it so um that's just another reason why holding it for a bunch of turns isn't really useful i'll usually go two out of five just to hold it for two turns um i think with spell power this should go up to three i'm fairly certain but uh yeah we're just going to leave it at two out of five so now we have our attenuate so at five out of five it's doing 199.87 temporal damage over three turns in a radius of two doesn't really seem like that much and it's it's not really like i said um attenuate is or paradox mage is a decent dps class their mitigation is a strong point not their damage but the thing about attenuate is it stacks with itself so uh it lasts for four turns but its cooldown is also four turns so the problem with that is by the time we recast it, it will be, or by, by the time it's ready to be recast, it will have worn off the target. But if we can cast Attenuate quicker than every four turns, it will stack indefinitely. It not only stacks, but it will refresh the duration. So if I get two Attenuate, if I get an Attenuate on before uh, the timer runs out or before the debuff wears off, it will have two attenuates on for the full four duration. So that's kind of how um, Paradox Mages do their damage. It eventually, you can stack up attenuate to really any amount, but mostly, even on the hardest guys, it really only amounted in about 900 damage per turn, 800 damage per turn before the enemies died. But that's, that's more than significant, especially with how long you can survive, which is basically indefinitely in any fight, even with, as long as Adamaton, Automaton doesn't one-shot you, you can survive forever via Temporal Reprieve, Reality Smearing, and Attenuate Healing. So, it's really, really nice. Attenuate, I mean. It's a really nice complement to the rest of your skills. Alright, Chronomancy Stasis. I rarely ever take this. They just got too many other things to use. And I like to take Tinkers if I can, but normally I don't even have room for that. But yeah, we'll go over it anyway. Uh, this one... Uh, uh, space-time stability, it just gets your, it moves your paradox closer to your preferred paradox. You can set your paradox with this. So if you set it at 300, it goes higher. If you set it at 200, your spell, your spell power is a lot lower, but um, it'll take a lot longer before you start inducing anomalies. Um, what I normally do is, yeah, see we lost uh, about 20, 20 damage on our on our attenuate by lowering it and also you really can't lower it from 300 because attenuate is a debuff you need high spell power to get it to stick on some enemies so you can't lowering it below 300 is not advised if you're a temporal warden yeah go ahead and lower it to 200 that's fine or 250 but with a paradox mage i would just unless you're like a pro and you know what you're doing leave it at 300 some guys like to set it higher i've i hate anomalies I hate when random things happen, so I never really do take advantage of high paradox via like via setting it myself. I will be at high paradox, but not because I want to be. Uh, time shield, very good. It's not to be confused with temporal's time shield, although they are pretty much the same. Um, mental uh, effects on you are their duration is reduced by 42% if it's applied while you have this on. Uh, it's instant, just like temporal shield, and then uh, it uh, it's its uh, shield amount is decent enough. It's 380 at uh, 5 out of 5 for 7 turns, which is usable. Um, this is the main reason why I'd want to go here early, but it just helps me level up early on before I can get my reality smearing and everything going at higher spell power, but it's really not needed. That's why I don't really come here with the Paradox Mage. Stop. That's It's a nice spell. 
Uh, it does okay damage, but it attempts to stun enemies in a three ball radius for three turns. It's really nice. It's got a it's pretty low uh, stun duration, but it's a big AOE stun, so that's nice. This is like these are all good. Stasis is good except for space time stability. It's just not good enough. All right, now static history. I don't. I don't ever use this, but uh, let's go over why. For the next one turn, you may not create minor anomalies. You do not regain paradox or lose the spell you're casting if a random anomaly would normally occur. It has no effect on major anomalies. All right, the reason why I don't use this is because with hidden resources, you shouldn't need to use it. But um, it's only going to stop your minor, minor anomalies, which they aren't as powerful as the spells you should be casting, but they're not bad either. They're not too bad either. So this is, it's good, not that great. Honestly, I should use it more than I do, especially because it's instant. But the problem is we do not go into stasis at all. All right, Chronomancy Timeline Threading. This one is fun and I wish we had the, I wish I had the points to use it, but I just, I don't think that I do. Uh, Rethread, it just does, it's a beam that uh, connects other enemies and it can hit up to three enemies but it's not gonna hit the same enemy twice. And then I think, I'm pretty sure if they go over each other, they also hit again, but don't quote me on that. Uh, temporal Fugue, this is one of the ways that you can get um, Attenuate to last, to get by the cooldown on Attenuate. Uh, for six turns, you create two, this is what you see enemy Paradox Mages doing. They create two alternate versions of themselves. All damage done to you is reduced by two thirds, but all damage you do is also reduced by two thirds. Now, the reason why this is okay is because you can you can cast attenuate, then cast dust to dust, then switch to a new temporal fugue, cast attenuate, cast dust to dust, then switch to a new temporal fugue, and then cast attenuate and dust to dust. So it's 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 one way you can get around the cooldown of. Uh, the cooldown problem with attenuate, but it's not the best one in my opinion because the cooldown for this is 24. It's okay. Uh, basically, it's got a 25% uptime, which is okay. Braid lifelines. Your rethread now braids the lifelines of all targets hit for two turns. Braided targets take 2%, 10% of all damage dealt to the other braided targets. That's actually really nice um, because your attenuate is going to be doing damage in an AoE anyway. And then cease to exist. I've never used this, but I've heard people. I've never, I've really never built a Paradox Mage with timeline threading, so obviously I'm not going to use Cease to Exist, but I've heard people say it's decent. Uh, you attempt to remove a target from the timeline, lowering its resistance to physical and temporal damage by 58%. Uh, if you manage to kill the target while the spell is in effect, you'll be returned to the point in time you cast this spell and the target will be slain. This spell splits the timeline, attempting to use another spell that also splits the timeline while this effect is active will be unsuccessful. So basically, it lets you blow all your stuff on one target, and if you get it killed, it sends you back, and then that target is dead. So it's, it's useful. It's just we don't have the points for timeline threading. All right. Chronomancy Spellbiting. We will be taking this. The reason we'll be taking this is specifically for Empower. The other ones are nice, but it's specifically for Empower. Empowers the selected Chronomancy spell, increasing spell power when casting it by 57%. So, uh, Attenuate, like I said, is a debuff. If this guy has too high a spell save, our Attenuate's going to have a hard time landing. So we, we need to buff our spell power any way we can. And this one specifically buffs Attenuate. So we'll go from 211 damage to 290 damage. So that's a pretty big increase in damage. But also, it's a, it's a big increase in spell power. So it's actually going to stick a lot easier than before. Uh, with Atomaton, Atomaton, no, this was back in 1.5. I just barely had enough spell power to get this on with web, or Webs of Fate and everything. Uh, webs of Fate increases your, uh, or Spin Fate increases your spell power too after you cast or do stuff. But... Um, I just barely had enough spell power to affect Atomaton. Now that actually might not be as big of an issue um, now because with items, you're seeing a lot higher spell power val values on items. 
So it's probably, you probably won't need Empower for the purposes of sticking your debuff on a target unless you get unlucky with gear drops. However, you still want to use it because Attenuate, like I said, is going to be your main damage source. It's not only going to increase your damage, it's also going to increase your healing. So Empower, Attenuate. Now the rest of these are also good. As you can see, you don't need to take one before the other in this tree. They're all independent of each other. Extension, that increases the duration, like with Temporal Reprieve. Matrix, it uh, reduces the cooldown, and I, it's not floored, so you need to take it up, I think, to three or four out of five to get uh, dust to dust down to a two-turn cooldown. And then Quicken, it reduces the casting speed of the selected chron Chronomancy spell. What I do is I rarely use Quicken. I do use Matrix and Extension. Extension specifically, you need to finagle it. Let's go three out of five. All right, our temporal reprieve right now is, let's do the math, uh, seven turns. So if we add this, it makes temporal reprieve go up to nine turns. Okay, well, let's put another point in it. Nine turns. Still at nine, so we're probably gonna have to go five out of five to get it to 10 turns. Hmm, hold on. Let's set our preferred paradox to 400 and see if that'll do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so our preferred paradox, 350. So with higher spell power at 300 paradox, you're gonna be able to get this up to 10 turns. So you will probably wanna go five out of five for this. Because once you use timeless, that 10 turns becomes 12 turns. And if you're really high paradox, it might even be able to get 13 or 14 turns. Who knows? But yeah, really nice use of extension. But again, this one's less necessary. Temporal reprieve is going to be more important uh, for the really hard fights. But again, it's up to you. If you're dying a lot, then get these two up quickly. But not before attenuate and empower. And then Matrix, let's do this. Matrix three out of five, will that get dust to dust? We want to get dust to dust to three out of, we want to get it to two cooldown. All right, there we go. Let's take one point out and see if it still is at two. Huh, is it is it floored? It must be floored. Yeah, cooldown two, it is floored. All right, let's go out five out of five, see if we can get it to one. <laughs> no, you can get it to one, but you're gonna need spell cooldown from items as well. All right, so that's even better. We only need to put one out, one out of five into uh, ma the ma the matrix ability, because that'll bring our dust to dust to uh, two turn cooldown. The reason we do that is because, well, I'll tell you when we get there. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it yet. All right, let's close these. All right, going into Shalor. Grace of Eternals, one point. You can lower the cooldown, but you really don't need to. Again, it's global speed, which is nice, but you don't need global speed as a caster. It's just, it's extra insurance because you're still going to be capped by the spells that you're using, but it is nice to weave in like defensive spells while you're doing offensive spells, but yeah. Uh, Magic of the Eternals, I always take it to five out of five on pretty much every caster. 10% critical chance and critical strike power by 20% for just a passive is decent. Uh, Secrets of the Eternals, one in it, it's attack, so you don't, I won't ever use it. It's really annoying on enemies, doesn't seem to work on us, I think because it's only a power of 20. And enemies, not even halfway through the game, have 30, 40 uh, C stealth, so it's not going to work. Uh, timeless, this we want at 5 out of 5. Why? Reduces the time remaining on detrimental effects by 10. That's awesome. Most talents by 5. Increases the time remaining on beneficial effects by 5, up to 2 times the current duration. So, if we... Now, Temporal Reprieve is actually a buff. So when we get here and we use Timeless... Oh, it doesn't... It doesn't actually extend it anymore. Why? It should. But, oh well. Can't have everything. That's unfortunate. Oh well. Anyway, it's still good for all the le the reasons listed in the tooltip itself. Get rid of all your uh, debuffs. Like, um, if you only have time to hit Temporal Reprieve and you got a ton of debuffs on, some debuffs last a crap too long. They'll, they'll last longer than the 10 and 11 turns you have in here. So this Timeless 
combined with temporal reprieve is going to basically get rid of all your debuffs but also with temporal reprieve you're going to be able to reset most of your paradox so even without extending temporal reprieve you're still going to pair these two together mostly or sometimes you'll have to use timeless before you leave it is instant so it really doesn't matter if you use it before or after but like if you're silenced use it and temporal reprieve reset the fight once it comes out you have you should have a teleport or something to get away movement infusion or teleport all right precognition that's unfortunate it doesn't work with temporal reprieve anymore but oh well it, it was too strong timeless already is too strong it's a very overpowered ability but that's fine precognition uh this is basically track i would put two points into it eventually um because it increases the time to five foresight you can do this but it really doesn't give you a lot it's just six percent crit shrug uh it does give 27 defense so that will be useful in the future but um it's not something we need right now so extra points you can put it there for the crit shrug and then we'll float four points into it later contingency uh one or two points only you don't want it to be going off when you're at 41 percent. you want it to be going off when you're at lower health because you as a paradox mage you're going to be able to shrug enough damage that you can be safely relatively safe safe still at 30 percent damage but contingency what this does is it makes a spell go off when you reach a certain threshold now what i normally do with it is i set just a shield one of my shields i set it to um uh contingency now when contingency goes off it'll use the ability but it won't make the ability go on cooldown so there might be better uses for it i just always use a shield and hopefully sometime you get the rune of reflection and just leave it on there for the rest of the game but yeah it's contingency is really nice all right see the threads i actually don't know what this does i haven't read it since i first played a paradox mage and decided i didn't want to use it so let's go through you peer into three possible futures allowing hold on just a second allowing you to explore each for 19 turns when the effect expires you'll choose which of the three futures becomes your present if you know foresight you'll gain additional defense and chance to shrug off critical hits equal to your foresight values so we get an additional six percent critical shrug okay while see the threads is active this spell splits the timeline attempting to use another spell that also splits the timeline while this effect is active will be unsuccessful if you die in any thread you'll revert to the t the timeline to the point when you first cast the spell and the effect will end the spell may only be used once per zone level okay basically it gives you three tries at any one fight i think is what the deal is let's give it a try yeah first the second and the third yep okay that's that's useful once per zone though is super inconvenient i mean i f i think i'd always find myself saving it and then never using it all right chronomancy fate weaving this is what's going to make our attenuate build more attainable all right spin fate each time you would take damage from someone else you you gain one spin up to three spins and that increases your defenses and saves by three for three turns awful i thought this was awful the first time i played a paradox mage and it that that is what i just said is awful but seal fate is not so much all right what are we going to take it to probably three out of five all right you activate seal fate for five turns now when you damage a target while seal fate is active you gain a spin which is crappy so far uh, but then you have a 37 percent chance to increase the duration of one detrimental status effect on it by one turn if you have spin fate active which is wait what you would always have spin fate active at, yeah oh well so um if spin fate is active which it always will be um the chance will increase by 33 percent per spin so basically it's a almost a for sure for sure chance it's 70 75 percent chance at three out of five to increase the duration of whatever detrimental effect is on the target the dura the duration increase can happen can occur up to four times per turn but uh that's rarely going to happen one or two times a turn probably i don't 
I'm pretty sure attenuate can extend itself, but don't quote me on that. All right, Fate Weaver, you now gain three combat accuracy, physical power, spell power, and mind power per spin. So that makes spin fate less crappy. You're still only going to be getting, even if you maxed it out, it'd be 30 spell power. At the end of the game, is going to be like seven, maybe, spell power. But if you find yourself needing to overcome someone's spell save, it can be useful, which is not a big deal anymore. All right, Webs of Fate. For the next five turns, you displace 33% of any damage you receive onto a random enemy. While Webs of Fate is active, you gain one additional spin per turn, and your maximum spin is doubled. That's actually not bad. However, I mean, you're only going to have that for... it. Technically, you're going to have it for five turns. However, it's going to take at least one turn to get those extra three spins. So it's, it's really only four, most likely two or three turns that you're going to get that extra power. It's too short of a window to rely on. However... 30% if it f at 4 out of 5, 30% uh, damage reduction is really good. You can take it to 5 out of 5 if you actually have extra points. But let's uh, go... Wait, I thought I moved this out of the way. Um, anyway, let's show how that works exactly. All right. We have Webs of Fate. What we're going to do first is set this up how I normally have it. All right. Webs of Fate, Grace of the Eternals as well. You cast Attenuate. You actually should probably do uh, Attenuate before you cast these two, but whatever. Uh, Seal Fade, blah, 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 blah. Damn it, I cast the wrong one, didn't I? Oh, well. All right, let's see here. Attenuate has four four duration on it. So then we cast Dust to Dust. Attenuate still has a four four turns on it. Then we cast Temporal Bolt. It went down to three, so it must not have increased it. Now we need to find another filler spell to put in here. This is where Echoes from the Past can come in. I'm not close enough, though. I need to raise it farther. All right, now Attenuate is still at three. That math seems off. <laughs> oh, oh, well. It should be down to uh, two or one. All right, attenuate, 74 temporal damage per turn. Now we attenuate again. It should be around 130 per turn. Or 231, I think. I, oh, yeah, I got a critical. All right, so now, our, is our webs of fate still up? Or seal fate? Yes, it is. All right, so we do have a 75% chance of increasing it. So it's at four, attenuates at four duration. Now it's at six duration somehow. Actually, you know what? I think the I think the split damage might proc it twice, or we just got lucky and attenuate proc itself. But anyway, attenuate's at six now. Well, let's cast another temporal bolt. We still have two turns of seal fate. Attenuate is at eleven, or I'm sorry, seven. Now let's go. Uh, let's go repulsion blast. Well, no. We didn't have time. I was wondering if we could knock it into the wall. Seven, still at six. All right, well, let's cast Attenuate again. Let's look at the damage it's showing. 231, cast it again. Now it is doing what? Obviously, Crit Multiply and Crit is really nice. 299 per turn. All right, we are out of Seal Fates, though. So what we need to do is it needs to last the five turns We've gotten, we've gotten uh, the whole time that Seal Fate has been active, which was for six turns. We need Attenuate to be at six turns or seven turns before Seal Fate comes off cooldown or before the buff gets removed. That way, see it's at five right now. I don't know that we're going to have enough time. But if we do have it that high, oh yeah, we're fine. With an extra Attenuate, we'll be there. Attenuate is at three. Let's check it out. It's doing 236 damage per turn. That's not right. What happened? Well, whatever. All right. If you could hear that, we got a an anomaly. Twist Fate. It's rearranged, which is not a bad one. So let's. What's our attenuate at two? Let's let's do the. Just cast it over there so it doesn't do anything. Seal Fate. Nope, we got another anomaly. Is that a major one? 
No, see, that's that's the game. Our attenuate got lost on the target, which I mean, it's gonna happen. But once you get into the groove of it, you should be able to keep attenuate going, especially uh, what you're looking for is you wanna get uh, on spell hit items. So you get more, more instances of damage per turn. That way you don't, that way you don't, uh, you don't run out of your attenuate uh, procs on the, or your attenuate duration. See, look, our attenuate's already up to 10 turns. So it's obviously not going to run out by the time our next seal fate is up. Is our seal fate gone? It is. Let's keep going. No, I wanna check this out. I'm worried that they took away attenuate stacking. Let me ask chat real quick, cause that would not be good. Did they remove attenuate stack and refresh? They say no. It's not refreshing. It doesn't refresh. It should refresh. All right, it's not refreshing, but anyway, you get the gist. You want to keep your attenuate stacks on there. What I'm thinking is happening is, all right, when I cast two attenuates, two attenuates are on there, but when I hit the target with Seal Fey active, I don't think it's working on each independent attenuate each time. So it's not extending each attenuate. It's only extending one of them, which is not good. But it's good enough. Your damage will be good enough, especially as you go on with crit, with crits and uh, crit multiplier. All right, let's go on. Now that's the rotation you go through um, on pretty much everything. Uh, most enemies, you're not gonna have to do that. With rand bosses, you will, but at the same time, you're so far away that it's it's pretty easy to stay out of the danger zone, and you could face tank most things anyway with the paradox mage. All right, chronomancy, space time weaving. Teleports you up to 10 tiles away to a targeted location in line of sight. At talent level 5, you get to swap locations. I usually take it at 1 out of 5 in the beginning, and then go however far you want to later. Uh, for a dimensional shift, every time you teleport, it lowers the duration of a debuff on you, which is awesome. Wormhole is pretty use usable. Uh, basically, you, you make a wormhole near you and then somewhere else, and then if you walk into it, um, it'll teleport you back. What's really fun to do with it is to get into a corridor, get into a corridor, and then as an enemy walks towards you, they teleport back. You put the wormhole, like let's say right here, and then you put another one all the way over there. So as an enemy walks towards you, it just keeps getting teleported back. It's The, the duration really only allows it for one or two times, but still it's fun. Phase Pulse, I've never used this, and I don't see how you could, but you guys let me know. When you teleport, you fire a pulse that jolts enemies out of phase in a radius of two around both the start and destination point. Each target has a 14% chance per tile you traveled to be stunned, blinded, confused, or pinned for four turns. When you teleport, all right. So if an enemy is right next to you, and let's say you teleport eight tiles away that would be a hundred that's a little bit over a hundred percent chance to be stunned blinded confused or pinned that's that's not too bad i might actually use that but we really only have i guess we've got two teleports with wormhole it's hard to think of tele uh wormhole as a teleport but yeah i think phase pulse is pretty good it just, it's a little off-putting at first because it's, oh, 4% chance to be stunned, blinded, confused, or pinned. That's terrible. But I think at 5 out of 5 or 4 out of 5, this is actually pretty usable. It's got a decent duration on the uh, negative effect as well. The problem here is when you're doing attenuate stacking, uh, you don't want multiple debuffs on the target is the problem. Spell Shocked, I don't think gets 
extended, but other debuffs will. Like if you have a magical, let's say if you took Curse of Death and you put it on there and you were trying to use Seal Fate, it would increase that instead of... Um, it would increase that detrimental status effect instead of attenuate, and you want it to ex extend attenuate, not, not uh, the, not the other d debuff. So, this is not a class where you want to stack debuffs on the enemy target, or this is not a build that you do. If you're going direct damage, you can do that. Uh, cutting survival. If you go. Uh, Tinkers, well, you still can't use it because it's not unlocked. But anyway, Chronomancy Energy, you are going to unlock with one of your points. Energy Decomposition, now, you already resist a lot of damage via Reality Smearing, but you put this on the end of it, and it actually, and it's just the icing on the cake. Partially dissipates all incoming damaging re damage, reducing it by 30%, up to a maximum of 28, but this gets much, much higher, especially if um, you're at high paradox and you've got a ton of spell power, this will go up a lot higher than 28. Um, and even 28 off the top after you've hit it with reality smearing is gonna be really nice. So I really like energy decomposition. I take it on my flat damage reduction uh, adventurer, which I'm playing through right now. He's got about 150 flat damage reduction altogether. This doesn't actually show up on your flat damage reduction um, on the chart, on the character sheet. See, there should be a flat damage reduction um, stat down here, but this doesn't actually work for it. I think it's because it has to calculate the damage first. Energy absorption can be okay. You sap the target's energy and you add it to your own. You put their talents on cooldown and then you reduce the cooldown of one of your, your talents, but it's by four turns at, at max. You can use it with attenuate if you wanted to. Redux, uh, the next, this is good with attenuate. The next talent you cast with a cooldown of four or less does not go on cooldown. So you cast it and then you get two attenuates. It's kind of like a crappy version of the Drem's Frenzy. There we go. Seal Fate. Let's see what we can do with this. What do we have this up to? 251 temporal damage per turn. Ends up being 301. All right. But yeah, that's how you use that. You don't need it more than one point because you're really only ever going to use it for attenuate, but you can if you have extra points. Entropy, really, really good spell. Probably want to take it up to two or three out of five the reason being is that an enemy shouldn't be alive for seven turns it might be but at that point very few enemies have seven sustains on at once now they may restart a sustain and this will take it off which is nice but i usually take it to three out of five basically what it does is for each turn it'll take off one of the enemy's sustains now it's not great for like the final boss at start you still need the dissipation rune to get rid of a bunch of sustains at once but this you can cast it on a target to keep off the ones that they keep trying to recast, which essentially makes them waste their turn. But yeah, really, really nice tree, Chronomancy Energy. Um, and the reason I don't take either of these two is because stasis or timeline threading is because I want Chronomancy Energy. Entropy used to be a lot better before Dissipation Rune, but with Dissipation Rune, um, Entropy kind of takes a backseat. But at the same time, even though I only put one out of five and Redux is also really nice. All right, for Prodigies, Hidden Resources is the one you want. The problem being with this one is you need Willpower 50, right? But you also have to have been close to death. You have to have killed a foe while below one hit points. You focus your mind on the task at hand, regardless of how dire the situation is for five turns and none of your talents use any resources. It lasts for five turns. It's got a 15 turn cooldown, but now, I know this one still works. Hidden resources, where is it? Oh, I didn't take it, did I? I wonder if I can take it with the cheat engine. I don't have the, okay. All right, cooldown for hidden resources is 15. Uh, the buff on me is six turns. If I hit timeless, it first increases the debuff timer to 11 and shortens the cooldown to 10. Now, you don't want to, use timeless only for hidden resources but that's a big benefit for it and then look everything we cast now does not cost us any paradox 
Uh, some people like to go high paradox and use hidden resources to stay at high paradox and still play the game. I don't like it. I like to be able to not count on hidden resources when I can, um, but it's up to you guys. Now, for the second prodigy, I've been thinking it's either going to be Etherreal Form or Adept. I think Adept would be good, though. I, I did some preliminary testing with it. Oh, damn it, I can't take out another point. Um, but... You have a lot of damage and defensive abilities that can take a lot, get a lot of use out of Adept. I don't know if the values end up being high enough to make it worth it, but it should be. So you can either get Ethereal Form, which is 25% absolute damage resistance and 25% damage penetration each time you get hit by a weapon, so a bow or a melee hit or whatever. Uh, it's reduced by 5%, recovers after 8 turns. You also get a lot of defense, but you don't need that. One of the requirements is having an effective defense at 40. That's what Foresight is for. You can raise it up to kind of uh, just float three points into it to get more defense when you need it. But um, I think Adept might be better. I don't know, though. So let's look at our main, main abilities here. Attenuate, 290. Empower, 57%. Temporal Reprieve, 9 turns. All right. What else do we want? And reality smearing. 39. So if we take adept and go back through there, the problem here is I have to uh, close out before it actually goes through. Let's actually look at this too. And 28 for energy decomposition. So paradox, it goes down to 0.36. So it's like an extra point in reality smearing. Attenuate goes up about 30 damage. Not bad. Um, and power goes up 5%, not bad. And then temporal reprieve, I think it's getting that extra 10, that extra turn from the increase in extension, but we'll see. Uh, where is it? What was I looking at? Energy decomp goes up to 31, that's okay. And then we get one more turn of reducing detrimental effects on timeless, that's okay. Two extra critical chance and 5% more critical power. I think, I don't know. It's close. But let's go, after we're done with that, it's up to you guys. Hidden resources is the only necessary one. Adept or other real form is probably the next two. But they're not good enough, I don't think, to the point where you can't just pick something else and have fun, you know? Uh, go pain enhancement system, max out strength, and get some extra magic. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of up to you. You're going to have more generic points here. You can put them into tinkers. You need at least one or two into heavy armor training. Uh, you don't need to do light armor training because all it really does is give you armor hardiness and uh, defense. Uh, so you don't really need it. What else? Uh, let's go through here and raise our stuff to where we want it. I'm going to go ahead and put 5 out of 5 in reality smearing. We go 5 out of 5 for dust to dust. And then Matter Weaving, obviously, is 5 out of 5. Jeez, look at that. 62% resistance to stunning. That is awesome. And 29 armor. You might actually want some points into light armor training to increase the hardiness with as much extra armor as you're getting here. Uh, probably want to do your extra turn. It's 48 Paradox, though. It's more than this, and you're gaining 7 less turns. That is just, ugh, I do not like that. Uh, global speed for 40% for six game turns. Yeah, that's a good, this is a good uh, compromise. Go all into haste and forget about time stop. Maybe they're both 0% turns though, so I don't know. It's up to you on that one. What for gravity well, I would take it to five just because slowing a huge group of enemies, it's got a really big radius. It doesn't, four doesn't sound like a lot, but it does. It's, it's really decent. Just don't, you can't hurt yourself with it, so don't cast it on yourself. Um, the slow is really nice. 33% slow, you can't argue with. 35% slow. And then, um, what else? I think that's all that you really need. Uh, I'd probably go another another couple points. Probably 5 out of 5 for Echoes of the Past. And then you'll have another a 
couple more points from uh, Heart of the Sandworm Queen and then your potion, um, Elixir of Foundations and Elixir of Focus. So just put them wherever you want. Now, really the only big parts of this build are Reality Smearing, Attenuate, Temporal Reprieve, and Empower. So that's, that's really probably all you really need. You need another filler like Dust to Dust, but that's just to do in between casts to extend attenuate. But yeah. All right, let's go over gear. Gear, definitely want to raise critical strike and critical multiplier. The best part about the Paradox Mage is you don't have, you don't need to get your resistances as high as you would someone else, but I would still try to get them around 50%. Um, because remember, the more damage you're taking, the higher your Paradox is gonna go, and that can cause anomalies when you're not using hidden resources, so be careful there. Um, what else? You need to focus on spell power. That's going to raise your damage with Attenuate, but also going to increase your likelihood of sticking the spell. If you have the same amount of spell power as you, the enemy does spell save, I think it's a 50-50 chance for the ability to stick. So just go overboard with spell power. You're going to be getting damage from it anyway. So there's no reason to go light on it also temporal damage if you're going if you're going to go the direct damage route you want to go all physical and physical penetration but for this guy you definitely want all temporal and temporal damage temporal damage and temporal da uh penetration then what else movement speed is okay but don't itemize for it Glo same with global speed even though that's really hard to get uh Light radius, make sure you have good light radius because it sucks not having good light radius. Spell power, it needs to be, I think, 105. Let me look at my defenses. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Adam Automaton has 105 spell save on, on uh, Insane. Now, I have fought at Automaton with the Attenuate build, but the closest I've got him to death is actually the damage the direct damage build because it's it's hard to stack that it was hard to stack that much spell power in 1.5 and direct damage is just easier so i used um i used my damage reduction abilities and just tried to blow him up but he did end up one-shotting me with a shattering shout if you can believe that shattering shout does crap damage but he ended up hitting me for a little over 2500 damage and i only had like 2400 damage and the radius on it was just insane so what else for gear? I would I would try, I've been trying to do this lately, but if you can find a one-handed staff and then go for a shield or a dagger in your offhand that gives you spell power or the life drinker does a talent on, on spell, it'll do blood grasp on spell hit. I think it's got a 10% chance or 15% chance. I, like, I think that's the best way to do it. That way you can, if you find spell blade, you're going to be really awesome off because Spellblade has a 10% chance or 15% chance to cast Flame, Lightning, and uh, Flame, Lightning, and I think Arcane or Mana Thrust at level 5. And then uh, it just, it's it's really awesome. So, But the Spellblade is an extremely hard to find, I guess. I found it once. I thought it was a new item, but apparently it's been around forever. What else do we want to look at here? Um... Escorts, really anything. The only thing I can think of for escorts is premonition. Grab premonition so you can get even more damage reduction. Premonition lowers uh, magic damage from far away from you by a certain percentage. And since you're not using mana, you can just leave it on all the time. It does have a hefty sustain cost for mana, but you don't use mana. So, All right, I think that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, if you have any questions for the direct damage build, ob it's obvious. Just go dust to dust and then all of the gravity tree. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the Paradox Mage is an S tier class, A or S. Uh, I guess Possessor is the S class or S tier class now. But it used to be the Paradox Mage before the, before the uh, Possessor, so... If you want a powerful class, go for this guy. Just remember, he's not going to do a ton of damage, but so long as you play smart, you shouldn't be dying with a Paradox Mage. So if you have anything you want to add to this class, any items specifically that they can use or tips for 
uh, newer players that maybe I missed, leave them down in the comments. Leave a like if you like what you see, and then let me know if you like me glossing over the skills instead of reading them or not. I mean, it ended up taking me about the same amount of time, but I guess, I guess it's up to you guys. So uh, we'll don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. I think there, there's one class I'm forgetting, but after the next video, Marauder will be after that. I did recently get a Marauder to level 50, so um, I can attest to how much damage they do, at least. Not necessarily their survivability, but whatever. All right, this has been Blackbinder, and that is my mama.